Hello everyone and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. I'm G and we are uh, about to uh, experience the dynamic of uh, Daru and Yuki. Which, you know, should be interesting. But yeah, let's just get right started. Hey, she been me my easy today. Itaro came back into the room with a girl. Yes, we were supposed to practice cooking together. You could hear plastic bags rustling. You must have brought the ingredients. Maybe she's not here yet. I see. Maybe I'm a little too early. Yukiyam Yukiyamane. Amane! Good gracious. This is the name Amane suggested. She was his husband's mother in the future. In other words, the two of them in the other room were supposed to get married. Well, if you two were supposed to meet, I'm sure she'll get here eventually, right? May we here? Of course. We're going to be cooking here, right? Yes, I hope you'll do some taste testing for us, Hashida. I don't know if I want to eat Mayushi's cooking. Don't worry, my ear's gotten a lot better lately. <laughs> huh. Mataru was clearly, clearly nervous. As far as Suzuha knew, the only girl he acted that way around was Yuki Amane. Suzuha and Mayuri were practically family, and he got along fine with Big Sis Rumi, at uh, Ferris Nyan Nyan, who worked at the maid cafe next door. So it wasn't that he didn't know how to act around girls. But for some reason, he always acted different when she was around. She told him that Yuki would be his wife someday. It was too late to do anything about it now, but maybe that was a mistake, she thought. Um, is your sister not here today? Huh? Uh, yeah. I see. Tarahashita's sister was none other, none other than Suzaha herself. Around the same time Suzaha had started spending all her time in the lab, Yuki had become friends with Mayuri and Itaru and began visiting more frequently. Which meant that avoiding her was almost impossible, so she was forced to tell Yuki that she was Itaru's little sister. But still, she wanted to keep contact to a minimum in order to keep Yuki from finding out somehow. That was why she was hiding. Alright, what do you think of this outfit? I just bought it. Yuki showed no signs of noticing Suzaha. She was twirling around in the center of the room, as if she was at a fashion show. Yuki was a cosplayer and wanted as many people as possible to see her dressed up. Mayuri had told Suzaha that once before. In fact, Yuki and Mayuri spent a lot of time complimenting each other's outfits. Yep, it's great! Really great! Really? It's like, whoa! An angel for the win! Thank you! You should dress up too, Hashida. This is a tiny bit of weight, and I think you look wonderful. <laughs> I'm serious, you know. Uh, oh. Taro Hashida and Yuki Amane. As she listened to their awkward conversation, so I remembered the last time she said goodbye to her dad. 2036. August 13th. 7.46 in the afternoon. Yeah, the peacekeeping squads have respawned Bashi. Which means it's only a matter of time until they find this place. Because the false information they leaked didn't do us any good. Let's hurry. Yeah, I'm opening it up. Oh, I had no idea there was a door here. Nobody will ever find this, huh? Come on inside. What is this place? The room was almost totally empty and covered from top to bottom in soundproofing materials. Not only were there no windows, there wasn't even a door to the hallway. The building they were in was once a symbol of old Akihabara before it was almost entirely destroyed by an air raid during the last days of the Third World War. Only a few people knew about the secret room inside it. The biggest reason was its secret. The silhouette of what looked like a satellite sitting in the corner. Oh, this is the time machine, isn't it? Is the time machine? Agri, Agri, Agri it's dangerous, so don't get too close. Zaha spoke to the little girl, clutching Mayuri's hand. Most of the children in this area had skin inflammation somewhere on their body from all the radioactive rain. She didn't. Her name was Kagari Shina. The registration form said she was 10 years old, but no one knew if that was true. She was an orphan who'd lost her parents in Tokyo air raids when she was a baby. Nobody even knew her birthday. 
Nim Kagari had been given to her by Mayuri, who was working at the child welfare center that had taken her in. She took her from the word Karagip Kagaribi, meaning bonfire, and hoped that she could be a light even in these dark days. It had been four years since Mayuri had adopted her, and her name on the registration form had become Kagarishina. It's pretty, Mommy. Yeah, it is. Zaha motioned for the Sheenas to step back, put her right hand and right eye up to the time machine sensor. The biometrics check cleared and the hatch slid open. She went inside and fastened herself into the seat. We've never done a man jump of this length before, but the technology is just fine. So we like the test jumps. Okie dokie. Zaha began to flip switches, working her way through the startup procedure. She practiced it hundreds of times in preparation for this day. A faint rumble from the machine began to get louder. According to the data, the spot we're in now is the roof of the old radio building. There's a gap of about a meter, so when you land, there's going to be an impact. Roger. The time machine could move through time, but not space. To arrive at the radio building more than 60 years in the past, she needed to launch from right here. Even if something happens, stay calm. Remember your training. I'll be fine. I believe in your machine, Dad. Her words must have meant a lot to him, because he stuck out his lip towards her. She squished them back with her hand. That's creepy. It makes me sad. Do you not like your daddy, Suzuha? When you do it, it seems like you mean something else. Well, and I wouldn't think of my own daughter that way. Who was it that was saying, You're starting to remind me of your mother, Pant Pant? Her mother wasn't here. You become a victim of the war, brutally killed by the peacekeeping squads. Don't take my joke seriously, please. Why? It was a joke? Zaha's voice sounded kind of disappointed. He was at the destination for August 13th, 1975. Her first mission was there. That does it. Okay, Dad, my... He was about to say her goodbyes. But then... Those from the roof, they're coming in. Damn it, they're faster than I thought. Zaha drew her gun from her holster. She's about to get out of the time machine, but her dad stopped her. No, just go. But, you'll. You'll be fine, just go, Zaha. No, I can't. Meishi, get Kagari in there. There's room for another person in here. Mayuri and Suzuha's father picked up the stunned Kagari and stuffed her into the time machine. Suzu, take care of Kagari! Okay. If Suzuha's mission succeeded, the world line would be rebuilt, and it was likely that the present Kagari would cease to exist. It might have been pointless to send her. But even so, a mother wants her child to live. That's how Suzuha's mom was, too. M mommy Kagari finally seemed to understand what was going on. She called out to her mom. No, I don't wanna! I don't wanna go! It's okay, Kagari. Suzu's with you, okay? No, I wanna go with you! You go to the past, you'll see the old me. I'll be a lot younger than I am now. I bet you'll be surprised. Mary handed Kagari a tiny keychain. It looked old. It had been a brightly colored green once, and now it's completely faded. Here's Mommy's Upa keychain. I'm giving it to you. Take care of it, okay? Once it was pressed firmly into Kagari's hand, she stepped back. Mayu was smiling, but weeping at the same time. No, I don't want to go! I want to stay with you, Mommy! Hi, Mommy! Oh! Kagari, be quiet! Kagari fell silent immediately. Even Suza had never heard Mayuri use that tone of voice. That's how harshly she scolded her daughter. Ah! Mommy! Ah! Agri was quietly weeping, unmoving. I'm closing the hatch! This time, the hatch really did begin to close. The inside of the machine and the outside of it. The two worlds were about to commute be completely cut off from one another. Whether Suzuha's mission was successful or not, she would probably never see any of them again. Suzu, 
Make sure you take care of Kagari. And tell Okreen that Steins Gate really exists. Tell him don't give up no matter what, you moron. Okie dokie. And then the door was sealed shut, and my Ariane Tower's voices disappeared along with the chaos outside. Dad, I love you. She whispered towards the door, now sealed shut. Let's go, Kakari, to the past. She booted up the time machine. Hashida, where's the vacuum? Suzuha snapped back to reality. Yuki was getting closer to the development room she was hiding in. Um, it's right behind that curtain. Oh, crap. Behind the curtain? Uh, oh, did it. The entire motion for her to stop and then quickly slid into the room. As he reached down to pick up the vacuum off the floor, his gaze locked with Suzuha's as she hid under the desk. Make sure she doesn't find out, Dad. Okie dokie. Did you find the vacuum? Oh, uh, yes. Evidently, Yuki was trying to be nice by cleaning up. The place was pretty messy right now. Knowing Yuki's personality, Suza could imagine she'd want to clean it. Jitaro grabbed what looked like a vacuum cleaner off the floor and left the development room. What is that thing? Did you get your number five? If you take it apart, you can use it as a normal vacuum. A vacuum's supposed to clean. If you take it apart, won't that just make more of a mess? Uh... You're so smart, Hashida, but sometimes you can be so silly. You think so? But you know, I like people like that. What did you say? Taro started to panic again, and Suzuha sighed. I think you really do need to reconsider the way you live. You clean every day if you can. This place gets really dusty. That's not all. There's also what you eat. You had instant ramen again today, didn't you? How did you know? There's a half-eaten cup of ramen in the kitchen. I see. And look at all these snacks. I tell you all the time that you eat too much. I do try to watch it, you know. Trying isn't good enough. If you keep eating nothing but cup noodles and snacks, you're going to get sick, okay? Also, you need to exercise a little. Yuki Amane was saying the exact same thing that Suzuha had just said. Perhaps they really were mother and child. Zaha was just beginning to feel a little homesick when she sensed another visitor approaching. Get through! The door to the lab opened, and a greeting she'd heard many times before resounded throughout the room. Sorry, hey, Yuki, I'm a little late. It was Mayuri coming to see Yuki. But there was another presence there, too. Hi there, Mayuri. I see Okabe is with you. Oh, Karin, it's been forever, man. Oh, yeah, it has. When she heard his voice, Suzuha ground her teeth a little. Interesting. What'd you say? Didn't you hear me? I said it was interesting. You're not going to tell me you want to go, are you? I'd love to. I shouldn't have told you. I was standing in the middle of Ikebukuro with a smartphone in one hand, staring up at the sky. I've been trying to talk to the Amadeus Kurusu as much as possible lately. Sometimes I would contact her, and sometimes Kurusu would contact me. It didn't feel any different than having a friend who lived in the real world. Talking on a smartphone in a crowded place like this was a little embarrassing. I told myself that compared to the things I used to do, it was nothing. I chosen harmless topics for our discussion. That still reminded me so much of talking to the old Kurusu that I sometimes forgot myself. I'd done that just now, when I accidentally told her about the lab. She had seized on it. So this lab you were talking about, did the original me ever go there? Yeah. No. Well, that tells me nothing. Which is it? Never. Kurusu had been part of the lab in the Alpha world line. In this world line, she died before ever becoming a lab member. Of course, she'd never even known where it was. 
You seem to have the wrong idea, so let me straighten you out. We call it a lab, but it's not. It's just... It's just a group of people messing around. And... This is how I was living there right now. And Dyer spent a lot of time there. They found out about Kurisu, things could get complicated. I prefer if you would finish your sentences. It's nothing. Either way, I want to see more of the outside world. All the times I've talked to Maho and the Professor, it's been inside the lab. That's why I'm out here early on a Sunday morning, taking you around Ikebukuro. And I am. Even at this hour, the area in front of Ikebukuro Station was crowded. It was going to get even more crowded as it got closer to noon. I was willing to take you to Maiden's Road if I had to. What's that? There's a whole world there you know nothing about. Wait, I just looked it up. Hmm. Are you really interested? Well, of course not. Anyway, take me to this lab of yours any today. Now that you've told me about it, you need to take responsibility, got it? And then she hung up. It was like I was her own personal taxi service. Ursus couldn't move around on her own, so there was no getting around that, but... Sheesh, she's so selfish. She didn't seem to think very highly of me. At this rate, she might start treating me worse than a servant. The real Kursu was one thing. Or no, maybe it wasn't. Being treated that way by the artificial Kursu was incredibly humiliating. Wouldn't it be a humiliation for all of humanity? Maybe I should do something about this. As I mumbled to myself. Huh? Akarine? Mary called out to me. She was carrying a lot of bags. It's probably more materials for one of her costumes. Hey, hey, were you just talking to someone? Hmm? Oh, uh, that was... A friend from my class at college. I see. Are you gonna go meet them today now, too? No, I don't have any plans for today. Are you going to work, Mary? Nope, I mean, you can get the lab. The lab. Was this good timing? Or bad timing? I know, why don't you come with me? It's been so long, you'll get to eat Yuki's home cooking. I mean, she's gonna try to make, try hard to make something too. How about it? In the end, I went with her. Hey, hey, hey. You look really happy. Yep, I am happy. Mary had been smiling the whole time. But I was the opposite. The minute I got here, I was so nervous I felt like I was about to throw up. I didn't really want to see Suzuha. Huh? Hmm? You okay, Okabe? Yeah. The door to the brown tube workshop on the first floor opened. Now came the building's owner, Yugo Tenoji. Mr. Tenoji! Doo -doo -doo. Hey there. Oh, aren't you calling just a t shirt? I'm pretty tough. When I'd been living in the lab, I'd given him the nickname Mr. Brown. It'd been a long time since I'd seen him. Okabe, from the look of it, you're actually making something of yourself in college. Thanks. Come to think of it, how are we handling the rent? I asked Mayuri instead of him. He used to give it directly to Snowji, but... Um... I should have deposit the money when it's due. Don't worry. I see. Yeah. This man. Was he around her in this world line too? There was no way I could ask him. Whomst? Uh... I had things go with Kersu after that. No problems. I see. Anything you can tell me, no matter how small, would be a help. That she's interested in Maiden's Road, maybe? What's that? A place where a whole world you know nothing about exists. Wait, I'll look it up. Bad idea. The darkness is very deep. If there's anything that seems off, I'll let you know. Would you? I know it's a lot of trouble. Please and thank you. Uh, there we go. I couldn't help but be wary of him. That's why I'd started to put some distance between us. If nothing else, I'd avoid trying to interact with him. I know. Don't cause too much trouble. Noji saw that I'd gone silent and went back inside. And he looked over at me with a worried expression. You okay? You don't want to go home? Let's go. Noji didn't matter. What mattered was... Why was I here? Did I feel like something needed to change? Or did I really want to show Curse through the lab? 
Going up the stairs, still unsure of the answer. <laughs> Mary went in first. Sorry, Yuki, I'm a little late. Hey there, Mary. I peeked inside the room. Daru and Yuki were there. Their eyes went wide when they saw me. I see Okabe's with you. Oh, Okarine, it's been forever, man. Oh, yeah, it has. I quickly scanned the room. There was no sign of Suzuha. Part of me was a little relieved. Can I come in? It's your own lab, dude. Don't ask that. That's true, I guess. I don't think I can call Kurusu right now. I followed Mary to the lab and tried to relax my legs by sitting on the couch. I didn't feel relaxed at all. I felt like my skin was crawling. I glanced over at Yuki. Oh, if it's so cute, Yuki. I wore it because I wanted to hear you say that. That's so nice. Maybe she wants to wear it too. Want to switch outfits later? Might be the right size. I heard about Yuki's future from Suzuha too. I still couldn't believe someone this pretty was going to marry Daru. What the? I figured you would have reached the lab by now. I ran to the development room in the back, clutching my smartphone. You've got a lot of free time, don't you? Why are you lowering your voice? Do you not want your friends to know about me? Of course not. I hadn't even checked with Maho and Dr. Leskinen to see if it was okay to tell other people about Amadeus. Well, that's fine. I can figure out what's going on. Kirsu lowered her voice as well. Just give me a little look around the room. All you have to do is hold the camera up. Sheesh. I sighed and held the smartphone up to my chest. I spun around once like I was taking a video with my camera. Hmm. Filthy. That's your first impression? Sorry, I'll try that again. It's full of junk. That wasn't much better. No, it was true. I know labs are never clean, but this is especially bad. It's about as bad as Maho's hotel room. Is it okay to share private information like that? You tell her to clean her room, too. I'd bite my head off if I did that. But still. Kirsu paused and smiled. I kind of always wanted to have a shared room like this. It must be pretty nice if there are all these people here. Kirsu. Yeah, Kurusu. In the Alpha World line, you said the same thing. You really... Uncle, who are you talking to? What? I suddenly heard a girl's voice from under the desk and was so surprised I screamed. Who's there? Shh, be quiet. Huh? Is that you, Suzuha? Shh! Was she hiding? Why? Daru, Mayuri, and Yuki heard me scream and ran over to see what the problem was. Okay, what's wrong? Huh? Is that Suzuha? Uh oh. Suzuha looked upset. It was only then I realized who she was hiding from. And now for our next story. Kazukazu Komazawa, a member of the Di Diet's House of Representatives, held a press conference today at 10 a.m. to announce his resignation after accepting legal donations from corporations. Illegal donations from corporations. Someone left the TV on and it was playing the afternoon news. Suzuha knew no one was watching it, but she used the remote to turn the volume up anyway. She wanted to keep the girls in the shower room from hearing us. I could hear Mayuri and Yuki laughing from the shower. Things had gotten really awkward when Yuki had found Suzuha, but Mayuri quickly came up with a plan. At first, her plan was for the three of them, including Suzuha, to shower naked together and hopefully get Yuki and Suzuha more comfortable around each other. But Suzuha, Suzuha said that the shower room was too small for three people and refused. Well, this is a problem. Suzuha was staring up at the ceiling. Not your fault, Suzuha. It's Okarine's. It's your fault for not telling me about her earlier. It wasn't time. Anyway, you were mumbling into your smartphone back there. What were you doing? I was... Well... We're talking to somebody, weren't you? 
I got this new app and I was trying it out. Oh, a girl game one? You've gotten into those, huh? I'll give you my list of recommended apps later then. Thanks. I guess I'd managed to fool them about Amadeus. In any event, it was my screw up. Sorry for scaring you. Why do you need to hide from her anyway? I already told her you're Daru's sister. I think it just makes you just more suspicious. Zaha had tried to avoid Yuki to begin with. Just meeting her father was enough to potentially cause a time paradox, she said. And that chance went up even more if she met her mother. But Yuki had found her before long, and so Zaha had been forced to say she was Daru's little sister. Yuki believed it, so why make things any more complicated? Kara, but Mom wants to be friends with me more than I thought she would. If I talk to her too much, I might slip up. If you see someone who's just like you, you either hate them or take an interest in them, I bet. Yuki Amane was the latter. It'd be much easier if she hated me. You just tell her. Or maybe not. Right now, only a few people knew that Suzuha was a time traveler. Me, Daru, Mayuri, and Ferris. That was all. Wait, do we have to explain anything at all? Huh? I mean, she isn't really the type to pry. You should know that, right, Suzuha? You're right. She wasn't like that in the future. What's the problem? When the time comes, I'll explain it to her. Really? Yeah. Fine. I'll leave it up to you. Zaha nodded. So, from now on, you can stop trying to avoid a she. I don't know if I can do that without screwing up. It'll be fine. I don't know if you're one to talk, though. Hmm? Look at how awkward you were with her. I'm not the problem here. And then the conversation came to a halt, which meant we started thinking about the voices coming from the shower room. And so... Dara opened his mouth. Perhaps he couldn't take it anymore. Can you go watch Nico live streaming? There's a blood tune stream on now. Do I need to do it even if I tell you no, right? Yep. Then go ahead. Zaha sighed, and Dara sat in front of the PC and put his headphones on. <laughs> Where is it, Uncle? I was just thinking about how well you get along with your dad. Really? Yeah, Dara was like this in the future, wasn't he? He was thinner and cooler. I can't even imagine. And the conversation died again. There were a ton of things I needed to talk to Suzuha about. That was why I couldn't say a word. Maybe it was the same for her. Since there was nothing else to do, Suzuha and I turned back to the TV. The news was still on. The opening event for the French fashion brand Le Paradis was held in Ginza this morning. As the newcaster spoke, I could see over a hundred women lined up in front of a store. How peaceful, isn't it? By the time I was old enough to remember anything, this was all gone. On the TV, a girl in a pretty outfit was talking to an interviewer. I'm jealous. You don't have to kill anyone. Nobody's going to kill them. In the world I grew up in, you had to kill without mercy, no matter if they were a man or a woman. Your life could end at any moment. Your terror was with you every second of every day. The only way to forget the terror was to give yourself over to the madness and become one of the killers. That was war. That was Suzuha's life. I've been to many nightmarish world lines, but none of them were that bad. My dad's work on the time machine got him branded a rebel. Daru had made the time machine that bought Suzuhei here. It was far more powerful than the other one that existed in the Alpha world line. I left the military to join him and his group, and the police and peacekeeping squads came after me. Battles after that were worse. There were a lot of them. I don't want to use the phrase fighting the good fight. I killed a lot of people and lost many of my friends and comrades. One of them was my mother. Larry was still staring at the computer screen. I could see him twitch. He must have been listening to Suzuha while he pretended to look at the screen. He tried to protect me from one of the army's drones and was gunned down. So the first time I'd heard how Yuki Amane died. He was in the next room right now, having fun in the shower. That was how she was going to die. I saw her ripped apart with my own eyes. Warm blood splattered all over me. Maybe the reason Suzaha didn't want to talk about her mother in 2010 was that she didn't want her asking about the future. There was no way Suzaha could tell her that. Listen, Uncle Okarine. At some point, Suzaha's eyes had started to overflow with tears. 
this world can only go into one place. Hell. It doesn't have to be right now. It's still a little time, I think. Just think about it again. Please. Please. I... Knew it. In my mind, I knew it. The right thing to do was do as she asked. But... I don't want to die. The sensation I felt when the knife slipped into her flesh. I took the life of the girl I loved. I went from my hand to my arm, then to the rest of my body. I started shaking. My vision blurred and almost went blank. <coughs> my hands went to my mouth. There was a wave of pain like my stomach was turning inside out. Uncle? You okay, Ocarine? Yeah, sorry. Zaha poured me a cup of water and I gulped it down. Sorry, it was too early to talk about this. No, it's nothing, I'm fine. I sank into the sofa and tried to calm down. I know what you want to say and how you feel. I've gone through so many world lines. I've seen people in other world lines have their fates toyed with by the time machine. I looked straight into Suzuha's eyes. I've seen your own tragic end. And I've realized I'm powerless to do anything. Maddie was powerless before the laws of this world. Using the time machine to change the world lines means breaking the laws of the universe. It's not the province of humanity. You could say it's the province of God. If we try, we'll suffer an even more horrible punishment. That's what I think. Is that your answer, Uncle Green? For now, if nothing else. I see. Feel free to tell me I'm just running away. No. I won't do that. So I looked up at the ceiling inside. Must have been a habit she'd picked up lately. And now, our next top story. The Ministry of Health announced that there may have been no reported cases in Japan of the new form of encephalitis that is ravaging America. But this new virus has a long incubation period and they cannot deny the possibility that it has already arrived in Japan. The Ministry has ordered all medical organizations in the country to draw up treatment plans and investigate the virus's spread. We're here with Soko Haruyama of Ochana Mizu Medical University. So, Miss Haruyama, what sort of symptoms does this new encephalitis cause? The new virus does not spread easily, but has a long incubation period and appears without warning. The main symptoms are hallucinations and memory problems. For example, hmm, you think you were at work, or suddenly find yourself at home. You have memories of being someone you've never met. There have been reports of that. Also, memories can be confused. You might have memories of events that never occurred. You lose the ability to tell the difference between dreams and reality, or perhaps your sense of the passage of time. In some cases, your memories will no longer match those of the people around you. You can describe it as similar to deja vu, or even the feeling you get when you're only half awake, but the symptoms are far more pronounced than that. What about treatment methods? Unlike other forms of encephalitis, we know that with proper treatment, a full recovery is possible. But even if we do see some cases in Japan, it's not a matter for serious concern. The reporter was still talking, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. The information I just heard was that shocking. A new kind of encephalitis? I knew the symptoms she was describing. Losing the ability to discriminate between dreams and reality. Losing your sense of the passage of time. Memories no longer match those of the people around you. That... That was... That was exactly the same as reading Steiner! Nineteen seventy five, August thirteenth, one oh five in the afternoon. <laughs> the interior of the time machine smelled like metal and was covered in instruments of different sizes. The girl inside was sobbing. It had been almost an hour since Suzaha had left to go look around. She'd assumed that Kagari would have stopped crying by then, but she'd had no such luck. How long are you gonna keep crying? You need to get it together. Think about how big sis Mai you felt. 
The girl Yashina looked up at Suzaha, her face wet with tears. Mommy? I don't cry. It's annoying. Ah. Suzaha walked over to Kagari and knelt down so they'd be at eye level. She had no intention of spoiling her. Her goal was to save billions of lives, and this was her first mission. Listen, from now on, I'm treating you as a member of Valkyrie. You work for me, and you're not a civilian. This is the year 1975. No way we know is alive here. Dad and Big Sis Mayu haven't been born yet. In other words, there's no one to protect us. The only ones who can protect you is yourself. Got it? Yeah. Agri was a brave girl, and she finally realized that now wasn't the time for tears. She tried to stop crying. It wasn't working well, but it was a lot better for her emotions than sobbing. She was a smart girl, so Zaha knew that. There's not a lot of time. Someone from this era finds the time machine and it'll cause a big commotion. The machine had landed on the roof of the radio building, which wasn't a spot that people visited it often. The chances of anyone finding it were slim. But in this era, they had no one to help them conceal it. That meant they couldn't stay long. She needed to finish her mission quickly and move to the next time period. If something goes wrong, can we use the time machine to come back? There's not enough fuel. We can't jump an infinite number of times. It won't work when it really counts, and it is all for nothing. See? Can you stand up? Zaha stepped out of the machine and beckoned to Kagari. Kagari looked surprised. Her eyes were narrowed, at, were narrowed at the bright sunlight. The sky above Tokyo in this time period was too dirty to be called blue. Smoke and dust clouds filled with who-know-what were rising from the rows of smokestacks. It all combined with the black exhaust from the cars that scurried along the ground to create a smog so thick you could literally see it. The sky above the city was covered by a veil of death. But still, it was the first clear sky that Kagri had ever seen. She'd only ever known from books and videos that the sky could be this bright. Nuclear weapons used during the Third World War had changed the weather over Tokyo. And their sky was constantly covered in dull gray clouds. The sun's light was always weak when it shone through to them, and it was never this bright. When I was a kid, the sky was still like this. I don't remember much, but I remember a little. Zaha looked up at the sky, too. The air is so clean. In 2036, you needed a filter and a mask to go outside for any length of time. Compared to that, 1975 was a lot cleaner. Now you understand why everyone was willing to risk it all to change the world line, right, Kagari? The world lines. Yes, Tree. do worry about that stuff later. For now, just focus on protecting this sky. Kagari slipped her hand into her pocket and took out the, took out the faded green Upa keychain. She stared at it with a sad look on her face. She was probably thinking about Mayuri, her mother. She was probably trying to understand what it meant that her mother had put her inside the time machine. Uzaha decided that Kagari was alright now. Closed the hatch on the time machine from the outside. The lock flipped on automatically. The only person who could open it now was Suzaha, whose biometrics had been loaded into the system ahead of time. Even if someone did find that machine, it would be a while before they found out what it was. Kagari, look at this. Suzaha handed her a printout of a photo. What is this? A retro PC called the IBM 5100. None of the ones in our time still worked, but here we should be able to find a working one. Our first mission is to split up and find it. Yeah! We can communicate with this. He handed Kagari a small transceiver. I was told it doesn't have a very long range, so don't expect too much from it. Um, okie dokie. We'll meet in front of this building every 90 minutes for a status report. Got it? Okie dokie. In answer. Suzaha nodded and patted Kagari on the head. Okay, let's get started. Suzaha was on the top of the radio building in 2010, looking down. 35 years, huh? 
That's how long ago it had been in real time since she'd spoken to Kagari here. From her perspective, it had only been a few months. The view from up here had changed a lot since then, and in the next 26 years it would change even more. She'd seen for herself how this building changed over a span of 61 years. The thought didn't make her feel sentimental. Instead, she felt the loneliness and fear that comes from having a past not shared with anyone else. Using the time machine to change the world lines means breaking the rules of the universe. Inter Okabe's words flashed through her mind. But lately, she'd been thinking more about Kagari. She'd been searching the city at regular intervals. She was looking for Kagari Shina. She didn't even know if she was in Tokyo. She had no clues. She didn't even know what Kagari looked like now. Maybe it was a waste of time. And so, she had to find Kagari herself. But she hadn't had any better luck today. She turned around and looked toward the time machine. She would come here every day. The primary reason for coming was to see if her father, Itaro Hashida, had been here. Anytime she let her guard down, he would come to try and examine it. She told him it would cause a time paradox, but he didn't listen. She needed to keep constant watch. To be honest, she had a lot of things she had to do. Then she heard the metal door to the roof open. Was it her dad? She squinted into the darkness, but the person she saw was much smaller than Itaro, and the cat ears coming out of her head. Oh, there you are. Susan Yang, good evening. Oh, it's you, big sis Rumi. Ferris Nyan Nyan had a spring in her step as she approached Suzaha. Good Rumi, I'm Ferris Nya. Your big sis Rumi. Ferris's real name was Rumi Hoakiha. He was Daru's friend and had helped him in many different ways in 2036. So Suzaha had known her ever since she was very young and always called her big sis Rumi. For whatever reason, in this era, she had always wanted to be called Ferris, though. When Suzaha asked why, she simply responded, Ferris, Ferris, yeah! The answer, which meant nothing to Suzaha. Nobody was in the lab, so I thought you might be here. Guess I was right. Yeah, I brought you a snack. It's leftovers, though. Ferris showed her a cake box with the logo from the maid cafe where she worked, Megui Nyan Nyan. I'm glad doesn't Dad wasn't at the lab. He ate something like that at this hour, and get even fatter. It's not for Darunyan, it's for you! For me? Why? Yeah, you know you love it! Ferris grinned and nudged Suzaha in the side with her elbow. I, I don't... There's an apple tart, a Mont Blanc, and a piece of strawberry shortcake too! Ah! Does it doesn't look good, yeah? Ferris opened up the box and showed her what was inside. Zaha could smell the sweet cream and fruit. Come on, eat up! Don't worry about a thing, yeah? <laughs> Come on, why? Don't feel right in your cute little mouth. I'll put it in the fridge for tomorrow. Yeah, you're such a stoic, Susan Yan. Ferris laughed and handed over the box. They expire tomorrow, so make sure you eat up before they do, Nya. Thanks. You're welcome. Ferris gave her mischievous wink and looked up at the time machine beside them. How's Darren Yan's time machine research going? He's working hard, I guess. Excess Rumi, is it okay to leave this machine here? Zaha looked around at the roof as she asked. It was solely thanks to Ferris that no one had really noticed the massive object on the roof. She was the heir to a rich family that had a lot of influence in this area and contributed a lot to the development of Akihabara. She was helping to hide the time machine. Yep, I figured out this whole floor. Or roof, I guess. It's fine, yeah. I told the owner that we're developing a VR game. It's not the best excuse in the world, but it works. It's a huge help. Don't worry about it. I'm always ready to help save the world's elementals from the Bayaki, yeah. Right. Since many years ago, well, I guess many years in the future, I've been wondering. Sometimes what you say is really hard to understand. What language is that? Don't think there. Feel! Oh, come on. Oh, it's so cold. I think I'm going home here. In the end, she never could get an answer. The Suzaha Ferris was always a great mystery. 
I'll walk you home. Let's go together. Yeah, you can have dinner at my place too. That wasn't what I meant. Never any real food, doom you. Whenever I see how stoic you are, I always feel like I have to do something, yeah. Like a protective or motherly feeling. I stir something like that within me. I'm just fine. Before she finished her sentence, she felt someone looking at her. She glanced around. Meow, yeah, what is it? Shh. She listened carefully. She definitely heard a very faint sound from the direction of the metal door that led to the stairs. It was small enough that Suzuha was only able to notice it because of her training. Someone's there. Yeah, meow. They probably heard us. Most of the discussion was worthless, but they talked about the time machine a little. Someone heard that. Suzuha yanked her gun out of her jacket, and in an instant ran toward the stairs as fast as she could. She heard someone running down the stairs as soon as she did. The sound, heavy military boots in a wide stride got farther and farther away. They're fast! She opened up the door and jumped onto the landing. And she raced down the stairs, skipping three steps with every stride. But still, it wasn't fast enough. Zaha was born fast and she'd been trained to be faster, but it wasn't enough. When she finally made it to the second floor, she could hear the loud revving of a motorcycle. No! panicked and slipped on an object that had been left halfway up the stairs and rolled her way to the bottom. She managed to get into the right position and protect her head so it was her hips that struck the ground. Ah! She forced herself to stand up and run outside. You could see the taillights of the large motorcycle speeding away. The driver was wearing a black helmet and riding suit and already a good distance away, so she couldn't even tell if they were a man or woman. They revved their engine loudly as if to mock her and then spun a corner and disappeared onto Center Street. A little later, Ferris caught up. Are you okay, Nya? He got away. You should put that away, Nya. Oh. She put the gun in her hands back into her jacket holster and brushed away hair that sweat had stuck to her brow. What was that here? I don't know, but they weren't a civilian. They've been trained. Trained? Alright. Was there anything on the stairs? Bag near. It was right where I couldn't see it. They probably dropped it deliberately, and they read their engine right when I was coming by it. I fell for it. Me, it was a trap near. Only someone with special training could do that on a moment's notice. No one else could. The dog glared in the direction the bike disappeared and started to think. Who was it? CERN? There was an unofficial CERN group, the Rounders, that were searching for IBM 5100s in Akihabara. Rinchiro Okabe had told her that. But he'd only encountered them in another world line. I don't know who it was, but it's clear that someone other than us knows about the time machine. Was that they knew about it, but weren't going to do anything more? Or did they intend to steal the time machine from her? Since she didn't know, she had to assume the worst. She wouldn't be prepared to deal with it. She looked up to the sky and sighed. It was becoming a bad habit. Hey, Big Sis Ruby. Don't tell Uncle Okarine and the others, okay? Yeah, why? If Uncle Okarine knew about it, he might say it was too dangerous that we had to destroy the time machine, you know? Yeah, it's true, but... We're going to protect the time machine no matter what. We need to take Uncle Okarine to the entrance to Steins Gate. That was the promise I made to my dad, and to all the people who sent me here. So soon, yeah. Alright, uh, in exchange, just make sure you tell Darren, Yan. Okie dokie. The last part was almost a whisper as her words melted into Akihabara sky. And I think that this is a pretty good place to cut it. Wow! Things are getting intense already, and we are just a few episodes in. I am so psyched about this. I'm so psyched. This is so awesome. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I hope that you're as excited as I am because I'm, I'm going for a long time. But for now, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steins Gate Zero. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.